Hey everyone, Reed Hendricks with Valoridge, and today's video is about home defense and some of the tools that you can use to better prepare yourself in the event that someone or some people break into your house and try to hurt you or your family or your loved ones. Let's take a look at some of the tools that you can use and some easy ways to compartmentalize and organize a lot of these tools that can help you in the event that these things happen. Okay everyone, so there's a couple of items that you're definitely going to want to have uh, for defense of your home and your loved ones and your family, okay? It starts with a firearm. Now I know many of you out there have different types of firearms that you use to defend your home. And there are some that are better suited for home defense than the others, but let me put it to you this way. As long as you've got a gun and it's loaded and that you know how to use it, that's good enough, okay? Um, if you want to use an AR for home defense, works great. 5.56 is a very effective cartridge and it works great. It doesn't penetrate that much through obstacles such as drywall and sheetrock. You know, it's a good choice. An AK is a good choice, 5.45 or 7.62 by 39. Guys, just be aware of that firearms handling rule number four. Be sure of your target and what is beyond it, okay? That's especially true if you've got loved ones living in adjacent rooms like kids and, and other family members, so be aware of that. Make sure you're aware of the angle of your shot if you do have to shoot somebody. I wanted to premise this whole thing uh, with that. Okay, that said, guys, just have a loaded gun, preferably a long gun. All right, they're much better at stopping people than pistols are, okay? They're much more lethal, all right? So, good long gun. That said, it's irrelevant. Uh, which one you use. Another big thing that'll help you, it's a good tool for something in the event of a home invasion or a hot burglary, something like that, is going to be your, your bag. It's, this is, I like to call this my go bag. The good thing about this, folks, is that you can have it right next to your gun. You can have it right next to your rifle or your shotgun, and you just grab it, sling it over your shoulder, and you're ready to go. Well, what do I have in this thing? Uh, I've got spare ammo. In the event that I need spare ammo, I hope you don't need spare ammo. Uh, if you've got your, you know, your 30 round magazines in there, hey, let me put it to you this way: you'll be famous either way. All right. So, uh, but no, I use you know spare ammo just in case I have a defective magazine or something like that. Um, also, what I have in here, folks, is attached to this. As you can see, is you'll see I got my tourniquet attached to this. Okay. If someone breaks in the house and wants to harm me or my loved ones, uh, there's a good chance that we're going to get injured. So we've got to be able to stop bleeding and, and handle that when the time comes. A tourniquet's a very good tool. So I just put that right on the strap there. What I also have in here, folks, is medical equipment. Uh, a lot of times people don't see, once again, I've got another spare tourniquet. You may need more than one tourniquet, guys. You may get hit more than once, okay? Got rubber gloves just in case. Uh, you need to treat somebody else. Plastic for chest seal. I've got gauze, okay, to pack wounds, to pack gunshot wounds or knife wounds, okay. I've got a uh, more plastic just in case you need to seal something else. I've got some uh, hemicon, a hemostatic agent. It's kind of like quick clot or sea locks or something like that. And I've also got my needles for chest decompression if I need to do that. And I've got uh, NPA, nasal airway, for that. All right, that also is a good thing to have. And of course, I've got a pressure bandage, okay, or an H bandage, just a, a bandage that can be used for any kind of wounds. Why do I carry so much medical equipment? Well, a lot of reasons. Um, you have to understand that in the event that you have to use this in defense of your home or, or your loved ones or yourself, that the police are going to get there and the medical people are not going to be allowed on scene until the police deem that scene secure. That could be a very long time. It could be as long as a half hour to as long as two hours. You think about it, you get an arterial bleeding, you've only got you know anywhere between one to two minutes, so people bleed out pretty quick. You've got to be able to stop wounds on your loved ones. How crappy would that be if you see your, your family or your loved ones dying right before your eyes because you don't know what's going on or you don't have the medical equipment? So the police are going to secure the scene. The medical professionals will not be allowed on scene until that scene is secured, and that's going to be a lot longer than one to two minutes, okay? Uh, I used to be a police officer. It takes a long time to secure a scene or a building. So you want to have medical equipment available because you are going to be the only help that your loved ones have in that moment. I also have, you know, a knife attached to this for whatever purposes you can imagine, cutting pant legs, you know, whatever else. Uh, what I also have in this go bag that's right next to my rifle is I've got another flashlight. Of course, I've got a flashlight attached to my rifle, but I've got this flashlight as well, a spare flashlight. That always comes in handy. And another thing I have in this go bag, folks, is a phone. Why do I have a phone in there? Well, 
Um, Landlines get, you know, unserviceable, unusable. The power, you know, uh, not the power, but if, if, you know, phone lines get cut for any reason or, or if I don't have access to a phone, if I don't want to leave my bedroom or if I don't want to leave the house, uh, that cell phone's going to be the way to call 911. So we want to have a, that available to us right away. So just some simple items in this go bag that you can use that you've got everything you need to fight with and to heal people and to fix people as well as well as communication. So you've got illumination, communication, medical equipment, spare ammunition, and your long gun or your gun, in period. These are all things that you can use in the event that there's a home invasion or a hot burglary in progress. All right, folks, just some equipment to, and some tips to use them and, you know, things that you can have during a home invasion or some things that are very useful to have. Um, I've had several students already in their families experience home invasions, um, you know, not only recently, but also in the, in the past as well. And, you know, as I said, my, my motto is the lessons we learn are written on the tombstones of others. Well, if we can use other people's experiences to help give us a better chance in the event that violence has to come our way, then that's what I'm going to do is pass on this information to you guys. There's bad people out there. They'll do anything it takes to hurt you. I want to give you guys the best possible chance that there is to get you the good equipment. All right, home invasions are increasing. All right, and when we're talking home invaders, you know, we're talking anywhere between four and five, six dudes at a time now, okay? Um, it's pretty crazy when you think about that, all right? So we want to have something that's effective against them, and we want to be able to fix people uh, in our family or that we live with in the event that they get hurt in any capacity, okay? I want to give you guys a good fighting chance. If you found the information helpful in this video, subscribe to the channel, like us on Facebook, all right? And what I really want you guys to start doing is to start having your loaded guns with you, either on your body or within one arm's distance if you're asleep, okay? Because you need that gun, you need it immediately. There's no time to go fish it out of the safe. There's no time to hit the lockbox, okay? Fingers don't work as well under stress as they do when you're thinking properly, all right? Really care about you guys. I want you to live. If you want to learn how to use your long gun, come on Valor Ridge, and we'll teach you how to do just that. This is Reed Hendricks with Valor Ridge. Remember, the lessons that we learn are written on the tombstones of others. We'll see you on the ridge.